Hi everyone, I'm Amanda Massey and welcome to my YouTube channel, Massey Styles. If you're this late in this style series game, I'm really upset at you. Go back three episodes and find out what to wear for each decade because this month it's all about styling for the decades. We're finishing off with talking about what to wear in your 50s. And then we're gonna switch gears and talk about how to take care of your amazing skin at that age. But as we always do, we're gonna start with my outfit of the day. These boots, I'm sure you've seen them before. They are by Naked Wolf. I live in them, I love them. They make any outfit cool, edgy, and current. The block heel, the platforms are so comfortable. I just love everything about these boots and more. Then I'm wearing this slip dress that I have had forever. It's by Forever 21. I just wanted something that's like really tight and body forming to wear underneath this blazer that I'm really opting this blazer to be worn not as a blazer, but as a dress. But I kept it open. I thought about buttoning it together, but then I felt like I looked a little bit too boxy. So I just kept it open so it does do what it's supposed to do as a blazer, but then it's long enough that it can be a dress. So it's kind of like a blazer dress and I really love the detail of the lace on the slip underneath. I think you're mixing like corporate with sexy and feminine, and then we're tapping into the early 2000s with the boots. So I really like the different eras happening here with this outfit. This jacket is my favorite daughter. I love this brand. If you're ever looking for dress pants or blazers, I highly recommend checking out Favorite Daughter. And for my hair, which I have never talked about, <laughs> but I did add in the accessory of a headband, but not just any headband, it's a headband that has a snake print to it because we're here to mix and match prints. So I'm mixing a hound's tooth with a snake printed headband just because this is what we're all about, this is what my personal style is, and it just works, you know? Life doesn't need to be matchy-patchy, it just has to flow, and this is the example. All right guys, enough about me. Let's talk about your fabulous 50s and some style inspiration for this amazing decade. So I have the outfits organized by casual, semi-casual, and formal, and we're gonna start off with casual, as we always do. This really adorable top that is a very small, like micro pinstripe print to it. And it has this, like, I don't want to say bib because we're talking about what to wear in your 50s, but it technically, like, is a bib style, but it's not junior or too useful. And I don't know. It's, I don't like the word bib, but at the same time, like, that's the appropriate term for what this is on the shirt, so that's why I'm just gonna say what it is, but don't get deterred by the word. It has these really great oversized buttons, and I just think it's such a great, unique top that's very age appropriate. These slacks are, they're not oversized, but they do have volume to them. And the reason that they have volume is because of these front pleats. There's a difference between different types of pleats. This style of pleat is called a flat front pleat. Pleat, and it is as it shows. It's a pleat that lays flat, but there is a bit of volume that comes out towards the bottom of the pleat, but it gives the pant a really great character. It's not just a pair of slacks you found. There's the small details that you wanna find in clothes that make them different and that people will start complimenting you because it is those small details that make the difference. Another thing I love about these pants are the small belt loops that are put together three in a row instead of evenly spaced out throughout the waistband. So we have three right here, three on the other side of course, and then there's a break, and then we have three spaced out in the back. And again, it's just a really nice detail that makes it a little bit different at the end of the day. So I finished off this outfit with these kitten heel mule Gucci shoes that have their classic horse bit hardware, which I think really complements what's going on in 
the bib, <laughs> I hate saying that, of the shirt. But I wanted to tie in the black with this detail, and so that's why I opted for these black shoes. Moving on to semi-casual. I just wanna have a little fun here, cause semi-casual, we're doing early evening, leading into evening, maybe dinner. And this top is by Roberto Cavalli. Roberto Cavalli just absolutely kills it at print and color. I'm just really love this top. I feel like in your 50s, go for things that are really luxurious, like silks, like wearing a silk button down in a pair of slacks or a silk button down in a pair of jeans. It's so easy, it's so simple, but it just elevates an outfit without you having to even think or try hard. So really explore these silk button downs. Again, Roberto Cavalli is amazing at prints and I just wanted to overload you on prints because that's what this channel is about. So these pants are by Gucci and they're a classic trouser and then they have the Gucci print logo all over them. What I love most about this is that it's not loud and obnoxious. The brown option, it was like a light brown in, in the back and then the print was a dark brown and it was just a little bit too much but the black on black is really cool. And when you mix these two prints together, it just screams luxury and expensive, cause it is. But at the same time, in your 50s, you kind of should scream that, shouldn't you? I think so, that's our vibe. We're gonna scream expensive at 50, so just go for it. Also too, because I'm mixing different designers, which I do all the time, we all mix designers, but I wouldn't mix designers in terms of their logo, but this has nothing to do with the Roberto Cavalli logo, but we know these are Gucci, so definitely okay to mix prints because we don't know the brand of this top. To finish off this look, these Christian Louboutin shoes have an extra strap that really holds your foot into the shoe so you feel really secure. And I love the fact that they added a spike to that strap. I just really love a little bit of edginess in any outfit that I put together. And these shoes really hit the mark in terms of pushing that edginess vibe to complete this outfit. Last but not least, we have a formal outfit. And I'm starting off with two different types of bodysuits. I feel like bodysuits are a really great foundational closet staple that every woman, regardless of your age, should have because it keeps everything really tucked in and neat. So when you're sitting for a long period of time and then your time to like get up, you're not pushing in your shirt, you're not tucking your shirt back in, everything stays all together and very polished. The reason I chose two different bodysuits is to highlight the neckline. So this has a V-neck neckline, so it is gonna show a good amount of cleavage, and I fully support that. I don't think just because you know, you're know you over the age of 30 you should hide everything. So I wanted to just emphasize that let's, let's show a little something something. But if that's not really your vibe, then what would be a nice alternative that's very simple, sexy, and sophisticated is an off-the-shoulder bodysuit. So this is actually going to sit like this, and so your beautiful collarbones are going to be the centerpiece of this outfit, and then you're gonna have that concealment of your bust at the same time, and then the slenderness of the bodysuit is gonna snatch your waist in. So I'm gonna keep this off the shoulder bodysuit for now to show you how to pair it with this really awesome fringe skirt. I love this skirt for so many reasons. I think it's an appropriate length, first and foremost. And I really love the dark romantic Merlot color of this fringe skirt. I mean, it has so much movement and so much playfulness to it. And it pairs so well with a classic black bodysuit. This is what it looks like with the V-neck here. You can see this is a little bit more sexy and this is a little bit more sophisticated. And so just a small detail on neckline can really change the vibe of an outfit. Both of these bodysuits, as I mentioned, go with this skirt. And I think at the end of the day, it's up to your personal preference. Personal styling is just that. It's personal. It's whatever you like to wear. When you do a V-neck with this skirt, it's very sexy. It's, you know, commanding attention. 
And when you're wearing this off the shoulder bodysuit, it has a quiet sophistication to it. So you just have to choose what's best for you and your vibe at the end of the day. Now, in terms of shoes, they're like a medium height heel, not a kitten heel, but they're not super, super high like the Louboutins that you just saw. So they're a medium heel and they have a faux fur rose detail on the front, which I think is really, really cute. At the end of the day, we just wanna add something different to our black heels. So you see on each of these black shoes, there's a little detail that makes them more than just a simple black heel. So when you're shopping for yourself, look for those small notes so that you don't just have a closet full of black heels. So this is the combination that I would put together for an evening out. And that wraps up this rack of some style inspiration for this fabulous 50s decade. Now let's switch gears and talk about skincare. There are so many skincare products out there, it's hard to figure out what's gonna be best for you depending on so many different factors. In your 50s, I feel like a lot of women and men have a lot of fine lines that are starting to appear. Your skin can be really dry. Your collagen production can decrease. So a tried and true product is called a retinol. However, retinol is a really harsh chemical and it can actually over dry your skin and thin your skin if you use it for a long duration of time. An alternative to a retinol is using growth factor serums. Essentially, a growth factor serum has really concentrated variety of peptides. Peptides are gonna help to stimulate the growth of collagen, improve your skin, improve the hydration and elasticity of your skin. Now, growth factor serums are pretty controversial because most of them, the ones that are really strong that you're gonna see the difference in your skin, come from human stem cells. And I understand that that's a really touchy topic for a lot of people. So I wanna express that you can also find growth factor serums that have stem cells that derive from plant and fruits. You can choose either one, it's really whatever your preference is. Studies have shown that the growth factor serum that you're gonna see the biggest improvement in your skin's overall appearance come from human stem cells. I understand that's really controversial, it's kind of a touchy subject. So I wanna let you know that you can also find growth factor serums that have stem cells that derive from plants and fruits. So you really have to choose which one you're most comfortable with using. I opt for human stem cells. I really see the change in my skin. The fine lines disappear, my skin is fuller, it's healthier, it's smoother overall. I love to use it underneath my eyes. Also, the serum, I just love because it sticks wherever you put it. Because a lot of the time, when you put a serum by your eye, it starts to migrate as your body temperature increases which can cause some eye irritation, but these serums, for whatever reason, maybe the peptides are just thicker and their bonds are stronger, they stay where you put them. I do wanna say that the name is literal. It's a growth factor serum. Whatever is growing in your body, you're gonna add growth factors to it and it's gonna multiply. So before you start using this product, go to a dermatologist, get a full skin check, Make sure there's nothing there that's gonna signal a red flag. And after you've consulted with your dermatologist, vocalize that you want to integrate growth factor serums into your skincare routine to triple check that it is safe for you because it's growth factor serum. Whatever you put on it, it's gonna grow. It works, it works, it works. So definitely be careful with this. Consult your dermatologist before integrating this into your daily routine. There are a million different serums out there. I'm exploring about three right now. I'm not gonna share their names with you at the moment because I want to make sure that they're great, they're wonderful, they work the way that they're supposed to work. So in about a month, month and a half, I will have another segment on the growth factor serums that I use. I wanna weigh the pros and cons. At the end of the day, when you're sourcing these types of serums, you wanna look at the ingredients. You wanna make sure that it's not full of water. If you see water as the first ingredient, it's 
not gonna work. It's just not gonna work. You also wanna look for the clinical trials that have been done. If you can't find any clinical trials on this product, it also isn't gonna work. So that's two little tips to help weed out the millions of options that you have when you're searching on Google. At the end of the day, you need to do what's best for your skin. You need to consult with a dermatologist when you're going to start using growth factor serums. I hope you enjoyed today's video and learned a little bit about growth factor serums and got inspired with outfits to wear in your fabulous years in your 50s. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.